The assertion that there are many fingers in this pie is without doubt. Dutro owned ten houses. How did he amass such wealth as an unemployed electrician or a low-ranked network footman? Why is there such a long list of deaths associated with the investigators and witnesses in this case? Because people in executive positions desperately wanted to keep it quiet. When you harm children, you disrespect the future of your own species and your own society. This is an attack on the human species. Pedophilia is a crime that even the most hardened of prison inmates and seasoned criminals find abhorrent because they understand that sexual or physical abuse against children goes against the natural cosmic order of life. This is why pedophiles are killed in prison. Most organizations formed to combat child sex trafficking are funding and facilitating it. Well, good morning, folks. It is um, 11.06 a.m. my time. It's Friday, the 17th of May. Now we're going to do another installment of The Human Devil, probably the last one, and then I might do an overview of the whole chapter in one other podcast and see if there's anything that I can remember that I might have left out in terms of connective tissue and things like this. Now, we're at the heart of it now. And I want you to think about everything you've been told. From the last free breath, the devil, what the devil really is. 1947, fascinating year. See, a lot of people are getting this stuff really confused. And they're falling back to their old Boolean decision-making process. And the consciousness we're going into now to survive is going to be one where it's not going to be zero or one. It's not going to be yes or no. It's not going to be black or white. What are all these abductions? Oh, they're demons, say the Christians. Another interesting thing you might want to note is as you follow through this abduction phenomenon, who's getting abducted? What nationality are they typically? How pervasive is this all over the world? Some of you may have looked into this topic considerably and others of you not so much. There are stories, extraordinary stories, about uh, benign abduction. I mean, the people are a bit traumatized. Benign abduction in Argentina. Why Argentina? Isn't that interesting? Well, you know who went to Argentina after World War II? A lot of the Nazis, which, as I've already made abundantly clear in my podcasts, are the Zionists, and the Zionists are the Nazis. See, they're not really enemies. Never really have been, I don't think. That may seem like a strange thing to say, given that the Jews were rounded up with the homosexuals and the gypsies in World War II and put into concentration camps. But are we not living in a time now where our own people are going to sacrifice us, are sacrificing us? Is this not what the vaccine is about? Is this not getting worse every day as the research comes in? And there's no turning back from this. There's absolutely no turning back. Can't turn back. You can't... Un- take it out of the people. And once it's in, it's in. And because it operates at the level of mRNA, okay, or RNA, the vaccine is called, the technology is called mRNA. And RNA is, of course, ribonucleic acid, which communicates with deoxyribonucleic acid 
which is your connection to at least the, f the first stages of higher consciousness, the first two stages of higher consciousness. <clears throat> Until you can exist as just a, a pure energy center, no corporeal form. Not even a translucent corporeal form like the astral. You just become a concentrated center of energy. Why would they do this? Why would they create a medicine so potent and so dangerous and so destructive to the whole human race? Why would they invent something that violates every tenant of decency? And inf inflicts harm even on the people who did not get it. Because as I said, it does not go away. So if a vaccinated male impregnates an unvaccinated female, both the mother and the child have the mRNA technology injected into them. Isn't that diabolical? The penis becomes the syringe. Think about that. Think about everything we've talked about. The penis becomes the syringe, the tool of creation given to man and woman, the male phallus, which inseminates the female and produces human beings has been weaponized. Think about that in context to all of the kink, all of the debauchery and depravity I've shared with you in this series on the, on the human devil, this chapter, these podcasts on that chapter. What is it? Well, it's ritual at a new level. It's no longer just the Mother of Darkness Castle in Belgium or Bohemian Grove, which is lightweight stuff compared to the smaller circles of ritual sacrifice. What's happening to all these children crossing the border? Why have they turbo-boosted the sacrifice so much? Why are they doing so much magic? What are they trying to affect? What are they trying to change? What are they trying to accomplish? You could certainly look at the history of the human race and see it as barbaric. Europe has been warring with itself for centuries. Men meeting in fields with shields and swords and bows and arrows and lances and horses. The economic resources put into warfare in the last 500 years could have easily fed the entire world. It is really quite astounding how much resource goes into warfare in every generation. And I'm not... A pacifist per se. 
In many ways, I realize that self-defense is necessary in this world, both at a personal level and at a national level. Remember, I've lived on the streets. I've lived at the lowest rung of society. I have had people try to prey on me, 16, 17 years old, grown men. Nobody sees the world the way it really is more clearly than the vulnerable. Because the powerful reveal themselves to them. The rapists, the violators, the murderers. Even the serial killers, like Robert Picton. So that subset of society, the streetwalkers in Vancouver, they knew a decade and a half before they finally caught Robert Picton. And many, many of them told the police. And the police did nothing. So having lived at the bottom rung of society, I have seen the world from the position of the vulnerable. And it is profoundly naive to believe you can think you can live without a measure of your energy being committed to self-defense. It's sad. It is unfortunate. But we don't live in a world that's good enough to do without this. Now, many people on an individual level have forgotten this. That you have to be able to defend yourself. Women have been led to believe that they can behave however they want and there's no consequence because the police have always been there to back them up. No more. That's part of the job of these immigrants. To bring the daydream reality that we've become. A people living as though there's no material economy required, as though we walk two inches above the earth and our feet don't touch the ground. That's the mindset of the entitled. Look at the looks on these people's faces, the young people at the university says they're dragged away by the police or punched by the police. They can't believe it. I don't think they've ever been punched before. Let's take a look at a clip that I've prepared which is going to explain a lot of this to you.
There you go. Naomi Wolf, a once prominent American intellectual, intellectual who has burned her public reputation in defense of humanity, and I commend her. It's not easy to choose the light right now. There are sacrifices that have to be made. This situation will reach a point where the only voices you're going to have are people like me who have set themselves up in a remote place where the law hasn't changed and the culture hasn't changed. And that clip was correct, by the way. This is largely an attack upon the West. They want to destroy Western civilization. Why? I can think of a couple of reasons. You could go to YouTube right now and hear some rabbi talking about it, the death of Edom, the death of Amalek, which is Rome, the descendants of Rome. It's very ugly stuff. Unbelievably ugly stuff. One hesitates to even fathom the kinds of minds that could do this. So what do I bring to this that is unique? What do I give you that nobody else is giving you? Because there has to be something, otherwise I'm wasting my time here. All of these topics are covered by other YouTubers and podcasters. What I bring you is the synergy of all the things and the explanation of what's really going on. And not because I'm super smart, but because I had the opportunity to meet people who knew. For lack of a better word, they were either insiders or so powerfully uh, charged with their consciousness they could, that they could see the secrets that were being hidden on the inside on the inner dimensions. John Edmonds told me the same thing. Told me the exact same thing. Stardust Ranch had nothing to do with this topic, the annihilation of the West. He told me the same thing three, three, four years ago, way before it was all manifesting, before COVID, before everything. It's a plan. If you know what the plan is, you know what the plan is. There's no secret. It's a plan. Now, the one thing that Naomi gets wrong is that I've seen her in other interviews. She's selling a new book. And in those other interviews, she said that it's the Nazis. Well, she says, you know, pre pre modern metaphysical forces in this interview with Alex Jones. I can only assume that's a reference to the occult forces that the Nazis align themselves with. Well, it's the reptilians. Remember what Shri M said in that interview? I think I was doing it in the 1947 uh, series of um, podcasts. That the Naga once lived here amongst us, and then they were called back to their realm, Naga Lok. And that not all of them left, and the worst ones stayed here. So... You can't make this stuff up. And I'm presenting the information to you from so many different perspectives. An enlightened Indian yogi master telling the truth. Western sources like Naomi Wolf and Alex Jones. I've already gone over the David Icke stuff. I've already explained to you how the Buddha talked about this extensively in his sutras. You have the serpent in the garden in the Bible, why is this so difficult for people to understand? Because it's largely an astral phenomenon and consciousness is so low now, it very rarely goes beyond the physical. That's why it's so hard to understand. If you don't meditate or if you're not opened up and given some assistance, and a lot of the Christians are, some of the Christians are, but they look at it all through the lens of demons and angels. It's all extraterrestrial. So what's going on? What am I saying here? 
We're in the midst of an extraterrestrial takeover of planet Earth. Think of the rituals. Think of sacrificing the children. What are you saying when you partake in a ritual like that? You know how gangs initiate people? Crips and Bloods and various biker gangs and things like this. To go from prospect to patch, to enter the gang, you have to kill one of their enemies. Well, what would be the requirement for extraterrestrial commiseration? The complete and total betrayal of your species. Rape and murder the children. It's not demonic possession, it's extraterrestrial possession. Always has been. It's not the demons, it's not the devil. Bob wanted me to make that abundantly clear in this book. I know this is going to sound really weird to a lot of you, but I actually earned tremendous cred with the underworld, the original underworld of this creation, which was put here for corrective reasons, to keep the balance here. That's what the demons and the devil are here for, to keep the balance. Okay? But it's always been human up until now. It's no longer human. Now, we ourselves are extraterrestrials. So the whole story is extraterrestrial. Every person on this planet is an extraterrestrial in, in terms of their astral identity and not being native to an evolutionary process on this planet. There might be a small population of human beings that were indigenous to the planet, some bygone past, and extraterrestrials like the Anunnaki came here and genetically altered them to force evolution. And that's one of the things that's going on down here, and that's why it's so uneven and chaotic, is that a lot of the evolution is forced. You know, what the extraterrestrials, from a benign perspective, are trying to do is they're trying to improve upon the original design of the universe, which is to bring consciousness back into union with the Creator, which I'm quite sure a lot of the extraterrestrials can't do. A lot of them have augmented themselves with technology. A lot of them have augmented their genetics so they can't reproduce normally anymore. Some races went to cloning. Cloning will last about 80,000 years. Seems like a long time, right? When you consider that we, we live within a historical framework of about 6,000 years in the West, beginning with the mythical Hebrews who never really existed. But after 80,000 years, you can't clone anymore. So what do those races need? To survive, to not go extinct. They need genetics. There's one of the reasons human beings are being abducted. The genetics. The rituals and the sacrifices are about betraying your race. The Christian looks at it, other religions look at it, and they say they've gone with Satan. And their soul is damned to hell. I don't think that's true. I think they've gone with the extraterrestrials, specifically the reptilians and other ancillary nasty races. I feel the need to say something a little bit positive so that people don't get too freaked out. So here it is. You really can't be destroyed. The moment you pass to the other side, it's... Everything that happened in your life is almost forgotten. You watch those near-death experiences. I've watched dozens and dozens of them over the years. They're all, they're all basically the same. So when we're in a body, we're, we're working on the experiment. When we're out of the body, we're outside of the experiment.
Many of the people who choose the dark path regret it after time. Most of the people, the vast majority of people on the dark path themselves believe they're worshipping Lucifer or Satan or some entity like Moloch. It's all currency. It's all just currency. Blood is currency. The psychic energy of human beings extracted by fear is a form of currency. The worship system that the Palladians set up was also harvesting our energy. None of the Palladian contactees will tell you that. The Palladian relationship with us was largely transactional. They may have changed after some time and regretted their decision, but you got to understand, extraterrestrials are not going to save us. They don't give a shit. They're, they're busy taking care of their own races and their own civilizations. This is just an experiment down here. And the only sense you can make of it is to reconnect your consciousness with Source because the animation of these vehicles is done, the animation of these bodies is done with aspects of the energetic construct we would call a soul. And the extraterrestrials didn't create that. They're experimenting with it to see what it's all about. And we're not that much better than them now, to be honest. If you were to stand before your creator now and complain about what the reptilians did to us, what might the creator come back with? What, what might the light or the, or the afterlife review say to you? Did you eat meat? Did you know how your meat was being processed? Those are sentient life forms as well. Chickens, cows, pigs, lambs, goats. They're all sentient life. Oh, but Bruce, we're at the top of creation. Everything is meant to serve us. Remember what the rabbi said in a previous podcast? I, I played a long clip about why they do blood sacrifice. That's the thinking. Well, if you think that way, what happens karmically? you bring something into your reality non-physically that has the same attitude toward you that you have toward the life forms below you. You see how it works? It's amazing to me that people don't figure this out. I've harvested meat up here, but I raise the animals myself. There's less karma in it. When I say the meat-eating in the 20th century, in the 21st century, I'm referring to the industrial farm industry. By the way, that's all run by the rabbis. You're not going to be able to find a piece of meat in any grocery store in America that doesn't have the... Look very closely on the seals and the stickers, and you will find the kosher sign. Why are the rabbis involved in all this blood work? Curious question, isn't it? So the Nazis made an alliance with the reptilians. The Zionists have very negative alliances and always have. And what is the common feature of this? It's the occult. They first contact these entities through occult rituals. And in many instances, I'm quite sure they don't know what they're dealing with. The number of people in the system who actually know what's going on is a small fraction of 1%. Everybody else is under some various form of delusion, deception, compartmentalized deception. It's the way the whole thing works. We're the blind leading the blind, leading the blind, leading the blind. You're not going to figure out anything you don't figure out yourself. Nobody's going to tell you the truth in an official capacity. Nobody. I don't mean to be this voice, but <clears throat> it's not a voice of doom, it's a voice of hope. 
I'm trying to motivate you to wake up, open up, see the reality yourself. Because if you don't, you're done. And what happens after this, I don't know. I don't know if you can come back on this planet as an incarnation if you're not part of whatever species is taking it over. So how did they do all this? Some of you may be thinking to yourself, justifiably so, I wouldn't blame you. Bruce, this sounds fantastical. You're speaking in such extraordinary generalities. How could such a deception be perpetrated? Well, remember we start in the last free breath, which is basically from about 1880 onwards, which is if you've read the book, is why I start with um, Henry David Thoreau, Walt Whitman, and the American transcendentalist writers. And I say this is the last free breath we had. When you have poetry like this, when, when your society is producing poets like this, you're still spiritually connected. We don't produce poet, poets like that now. We produce, and forgive me for saying it this way, but I just find it's better to speak honestly and directly. If you go to buy a book of poetry now, chances are it's written by, at least I'm speaking from Canada, where I understand the literary community very well, chances are it's the poetry of an angry minority lesbian woman who's got nothing to say. It's basically a victim impact statement. The world did me wrong because it didn't accept me. These people are very angry. That's why they're being put in power now. The world doesn't accept us because I'm a catamite. I like getting sodomized. The world doesn't accept me. Well, the world shouldn't accept you. It's an unnatural act. But they don't accept that, so they become very, very angry. I'll show you. And the forces that are controlling us, they say, hey, you see that guy? Now, that guy would be perfect to be president of France. He'll kill all these people we ask him to kill. Put them in power. And then you've got the really dark characters like Trudeau. Really dark. He's read in, believe it or not, as stupid as he seems. But there's something else at work now. Their plans aren't going as well as they hoped or as well as they thought they would. Something else is going on now. And I would say that the divine has stepped in. God, the creator, has literally stepped in as a player in what's going on now and said enough is enough. This is too f I gave you free will, but this is too far off, the free will plan. You're tinkering with time. You're cloning. You're doing all of this genetic work? No. And so where the divine would step in, that would be the humans and the extraterrestrials being corrected. And yes, the extraterrestrials are under the same... Remember, cosmic law is cosmic. It applies to every part of the universe. There's no race that's exempt from it. No reptilian, no nothing. They're on their last legs. They're going to be taken out. Okay? This is actually a good story, a happy story, what we're going through. We do win. The price will be enormous, but we do win. So how did it all start? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at these pictures. That's the U.S. Federal Reserve. That's the Bank of England. That's the Bank of Canada. It started with the banking system from a North American perspective. The oldest bank, of course, is the Bank of England, which started in the late 1600s, I think about 1684 or somewhere around there. The story of the creation of that bank and the occultists behind it, which at that time were very dark Amsterdam Jews, very dark, which is why Amsterdam is the center of power now, right? Brussels, you know, so you've got the Netherlands and Belgium are, are the centers of the globalist system now, 
Okay? The center of the globalist system. So to have a relationship with God, a full relationship with God, you have to be autonomous. What is autonomy? It means you stand on your own two feet. You're largely responsible for your health. You're largely responsible for your food supply. You're responsible for your water. You have a well. You unplug from the system because it's the system they're using to kill you. The system was created as a giant kill box. This has been more than a century in the planning in the secret societies. And not everybody's down with it now that it's coming into fruition. Some people don't want to do it. Some of the initiates don't want to do it, which is why you're getting so many defections now. It's all fine and dandy to talk about a hypothetical day where you and your cabal take over the world, which might happen in a couple centuries in the lifetimes of your great-great-great-great-grandchildren. It's all fine and dandy to smoke cigars and drink fine whiskey in a, in a candle-lit or whale-fat-lit tavern in downtown London in 1785. Because it's not real. It's, it, it, it's like a 14-year-old boy fantasizing about his sexual prowess. As soon as he gets in the bedroom with the object of his desire, he freezes up. It's happening to a lot of these people as well. I watched an interview with a high wizard, one of like, there's never more than 10 on the planet, an Illuminati high wizard. He defected and went to Christ, got baptized in Christianity. The very next day, both of his retinas detached and he's blind for life. All right, so that was the compromise they worked out between the light and the dark for what he had done. He's not even a doctor and he was doing 1,500 abortions a year. They use, the abortions are part of the Moloch ritual. They sacrifice the child. The most, the most potent is a late-term abortion, and that's because the fetus could exist outside the body. I believe I talked about this in another podcast. So what is it that the banking did? Well, what the banking has slowly done, and it's not that old, it's in Canada, it started in 1938, and in the United States, it started in 1913. It's only a hundred and a bit years old. It's only like three generations old. My grandfathers were born in 1900. My grandfathers, and I'm 57 years old. They were born before the central bank in the United States and the central bank in Canada. So when you look at the banking system, do you think that the United States ever really gained independence from Britain? Ever so briefly, but that's the War of 1812 was about forcing the European banking system on the colonies. That's what it was about. Abraham Lincoln didn't do anybody any favors either. Okay. But I'm here to tell you, none of it's going to work out with, for Team Dark. None of it is going to work out the way they think it's going to work out. Okay? Because there is a God. And they've broken too many laws. And they have to be corrected. And they're going to be corrected. They're in the process of being corrected now. But their plan is so far along now that there has to be a price to pay for the lack of awareness in the general population so the Creator will allow a significant amount of suffering amongst people outside the cult. And we earned that suffering by being too distracted. And what were we distracted with? Well, just look at the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. We're distracted with money, materialism, sex, pornography. We were living in a very unrighteous way. So not everybody can be saved. Miracles are stupid. 
Don't believe in miracles. I mean, miracles can be done. There's people who can do them now on the planet. I've seen miracles happen around me. I didn't set out to do a miracle, but they just sort of happen when my energy is high. But don't count on any miracles. Right? The miracle is your obstinance and your inability to grasp what's really going on. That ignorance, that inability to perceive is partly on you because you weren't doing any kind of spiritual work to keep your higher perception active. We all fell into the stupor. We all fell into the daydream. Now I'm going to show you something really kind of neat, okay, and about how the banking system worked and how it works and why, by cosmic moral law, they have the right to sacrifice you. You are the victim of voodoo. Here's a voodoo doll. You know the principle of voodoo? You create one of these dolls, and through a series of rituals, incantations, and magic, you apply um, pain to the living person for whom the doll is an effigy. Well, what happens when you're born into these banking systems? You get a birth certificate. A lot of you might know this stuff. It was popular 10, 15, 20 years ago. The free man on the land movement in the United States, the sovereign citizen movement. Winston Shrout, Sean David Morton was into it for a while. What were they talking about? Well, when a parent enters their child into that relationship with the government, the government assumes responsibility for the child. We're going to educate this child. We're going to provide medical services. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And all you have to do is pay. You have to pay taxes. And then those taxes slowly became more and more out of control. In Canada, they're bringing in the carbon tax now. Well, it's been in for a while, but they just went through a significant increase in the carbon tax. I hear thunder. The creator is pleased with this podcast. So here's how a liter of gas works in Canada. There's the retail price that it, the gas is sold to the gas stations or the gas distributor who then takes it out to the gas stations. On top of that retail price, there's what's called an excise tax, which is a straight up tax on gas. It's, it's very much like the coal tax the king put on coal in the 1600s. I think late 1500s, the king taxed coal in England. The British have been way ahead of everybody. In, all. in many ways, they're the leaders of all of this. And one of the reasons they're the leaders in all of this is up after they got the Bank of England formed, again, this is all explained in the light of darkness in one chapter called The Worshipful Fuelers. But I suppose if I'm podcasting, I can talk about it a little bit. And these two books work together, The Light of Darkness and The Devil in Us. And yes, people comment that there's a lot of typos in The Light of Darkness. Devil in Us is very clean, but there's a number of typos in The Light of Darkness. And people sometimes send me messages and say, Hey, Bruce, you know, I found this. I'm you've fixed this, this, and this. And I always write back to them and say, Look, writing that book was like holding a hot coal in my hand. I'm not picking it up again. Let it, let it exist with the blemishes because they are an artistic preservation of the duress of the book. Very difficult. Of all the books I've written, The Light of Darkness was the most difficult because it was my first encounter with this level of darkness. I'm giving it to you in spoonfuls. Okay? When I wrote The Light of Darkness, as I said, I just went into the darkness. And ultimately that was consummated with three days in the dark universe, the dark world. Okay? At the time, it was harrowing and a little bit traumatic. Four years later, I'm very glad I went through it. Very glad. 
because the darkness reveals itself to me now, which is why I see all these things so clearly. Because I can handle the vibration of darkness. And we're operating, all governmental and institutional logic is happening out of the dark world now. So if you can't go into the dark world and think the way they think, you're not going to understand what's going on. I mean, I'm doing my very best to explain it to you slowly, painstakingly. But the ultimate learning lesson is going into the dark world. So when you get the birth certificate, they create a fiduciary account for you. And they create the, the benefit, the beneficiary of all of the state's promises and benefits is not you as a living person connected to God. It's what they call the legal person or what some people might call the straw man. Now, the straw man is an old symbol in occultism. You've got the wicker man in Druidism, right, which was a burnt offering as well. I mean, my people, the Celts, used to sacrifice people as well. Okay? Not the way it's done in Israel. And generally, the people that were sacrificed were the powerful people. Okay? So, and if, if you read The Golden Bow by Robert Fraser the father of anthropology, you will find that all pre-modern societies would kill their kings and maybe the, the king's entire family if there were one or two seasons of crop failure. That was the price of holding power in antiquity. In ancient times, pre-modern times. So there weren't a lot of people rushing to be in power. You had to have a strong sense of what was going on and how you could uh, guide and direct your people. Now, all of these rituals persist, but in effigy. It's a pantomime. We ritually cut the leader's head off when we vote them out. So, Joe Biden will be ritually sacrificed this year in 2024. We're done with him. We're going to kill him at the, at the voting stations, probably. And it's not going to help matters that much because Donald Trump is in many ways as crazy or crazier than Joe. They're all crazy now. There's no options. This guy that Alex Jones endorsed in Canada, Pierre Polyev, nice enough guy, and he, he contradicts Justin Trudeau well, but his wife got the co a company that her wife is um, an equity holder in got the contract for all of the COVID tests, those things you stuff up people's noses, which were very bad as well. I'm not going to get into it, but look, as I say, and I'll continue to repeat myself, you can take anything I say, COVID tests, nasal COVID tests, and you can go and do a week of your own research on that one topic. That's not my job. My job is bringing it all together for you to give you the picture of the situation you're in. And it's all extraterrestrial. And at the end of the day, none of it really matters. You can't be killed. You're an eternal, immortal spiritual being, as all religions tell you. There's no real permanent hell. You can have a rough time in your afterlife in the beginning if you're full of regrets and stuff. What happens when you pass? Just watch the near-death experiences. The veil is lifted. The memory of what you are comes back to you. You look back at your life and you go, oh my God, did I ever fuck that up? I was a horrible person. That's your hell. Because those thoughts and those realizations in the environment you now exist are amplified in terms of their torment on you. You can't hide from your conscience on the other side. It's all very simple. It's all very scientific at a certain level. Nothing complicated about it at all. It is what it is. So the straw man is the institutional version of mass voodoo. So what did they do in the, to the trucker convoy during the COVID protests? Pull out the straw man, put a needle in. 
just like Voodoo, cut off their bank accounts. What does that do? Well, it sends tremendous fear and insecurity into you. Perhaps puts you in a destitute position where you can't even feed yourself. A lot of some of your property might be repossessed. If you if you have a car and you're making monthly payments, those aren't going to automatically leave your account either. Everything is frozen in your account. And there are people still in Canada dealing with the repercussions of this from two years ago. The news doesn't talk about it anymore. It's on to new, new and different news cycles like Ukraine and Israel and all of this nonsense. So the straw man is the voodoo doll. You can give it up. I know people in Canada who've given it up. You, 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 you write a letter. You get it notarized by a notary public or a lawyer. You put your birth certificate and all your formal ID into an envelope and you mail it back to the Attorney General in Canada. You keep a copy of the letter for yourself and then you can continue to do everything that anybody else does. You can drive on the highways. I know people in Canada who've been driving without a license for longer than 20 years. Cops can't do anything to them. They're out, they're, they don't operate in the legal person. They operate in their natural person. Now, if anything were to happen and they were to kill somebody or anything, there would be no insurance, there would be no state support for that. But that's all going away now anyways. <laughs> the, the legal person is the mechanism by which they're rationalizing the mass depopulation of Western societies. You, you asked us to take care of you. Here's our financial reality, largely because of fiscal mismanagement and theft, because these capital systems have just been theft. We're coming up on the first generation of recipients for the old age benefits. First generation, the baby boomers, because all of this stuff is new. It started in the 60s and 70s. So the very first generation to come of age and say, okay, give me my Medicare, give me my Social Security, they don't even have that money. And their solution is to kill them. And they, in some measure, perceive themselves as having the spiritual right by, by moral law, by cosmic law, they have the right to terminate you because you turned over responsibility for yourself to them and they can no longer care for you. Think of a native tribe in like 800 AD in Canada knowing that an attack is coming from another tribe they've been warring with for two or three generations and they have to pack up their teepees and all their stuff and get out of there. What do they do? Well, they kill the incapacitated and the old. You think native life was all sunshines and rainbows? No. This is the human condition, whether you live in New York or whether you live in with the Kabakar tribe up the mountain. So they would kill the old and they would kill the infirm and the handicapped, if they if depending on how many they even had in the tribe. Why? Because that, mer that death would be better than what's coming when the invading tribe comes in. Now, granted, the situation we're in now is significantly more amplified in its horror. And that's largely because this is being done with such willful intent and, let's be honest, glee on the part of these ritualists, these occultists, these debauched human beings. Okay? You need to take all this tension you get from listening to me and you need to convert it into spiritual equity. You need to crack your heart open and plead like you've never plead or prayed or meditated before for a connection because that's the only value of this tension now. It's not preservation of your physical life. The true, true spiritual alchemy is taking negative circumstance and finding spiritual benefit in it. Okay? 
Well, that's it for today. I am Bruce McDonald, and this has been the Talamanca Review.